All right. This is the part. This is the part where I look over here to see whether or not I can actually hear anything. Okay, so we're going to go over here for a second. And I'm going to see whether I can hear this. So technically, this is just the testing part. This is just the testing part. Okay, all right. I'm looking over here at the... Uh, by the way, in case you're wondering what I'm looking at, I'm looking at a Chromebook. See, see I've got my Chromebook. This is where... See, I have a Chromebook over here where I'm... Uh, where I'm doing the other part of the conversation where I'm trying to make sure it works. Yes, it's working. Hurrah, hurrah, it's working. Okay, so, so this is where I transition to the big screen. Hello and welcome to Cooking with Linux Without a Net. It's Tuesday. Normally I'm supposed to do this at one o'clock, but I've run into all sorts of technical issues today. Strangely enough, none of them computer related. You'd think it would be problems with computers, but it wasn't. It's scheduling things, people wanting to be here at times when I didn't need to have them here, all that sort of thing. And besides, I've only uh, just gotten back from holidays last week. And last week, there was no cooking with Linux without a net because, of course, it was um, it was my week of holidays. So, first of all, I'm going to start, uh, before I forget uh, completely here, I'm going to um, crack open my uh, bottle of wine. Oh, by the way, today's wine is a uh, Santa Carolina Cabernet Sauvignon. And I'm going to pour myself a little bit of wine here just to... Just to get things going, and um, I want to also take a moment to thank Linux Journal for uh, helping support the uh, the show, and uh, that's uh, LinuxJournal.com. In case you don't know, here let me just take, let me just take you over there. Actually, you know what? Let's do this first, okay? Let's do this first, okay? We're gonna do the like the official introduction, okay? So here we go. Let me transition back out of here. I, I know, I know, I could do this much more technically proficient, but here we go. See, see, there is a way to do this. There is a way to do this. So anyway, if you're uh, if you're in the chat, please uh, say um, say hi. And um, it's uh, Damon I. Nice to have you. Thank you. You're watching from your phone, and you're enjoying a Padron Seven Thousand cigar. I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what that is. But I'm enjoying a um, I'm enjoying a Cabernet Sauvignon, 2017 Cabernet Sauvignon. So, cheers. Here's to you, Damon I. All right. So. Um, so today, today I'm going to uh, transition uh, my face out of here, and uh, I'm going to go to uh, the other screen. First of all, um, cookingwithlinux.com is uh, where I live on the internet, and uh, you can also go to youtube.com, freethinker at large. There we go, youtube.com slash freethinker at large. Uh, that's me. That's me. It says live now. There's a subscribe button over here. If you don't see it. Uh, it's because you're already subscribed. But if you do see it, uh, you know, please subscribe. Tell your friends, your neighbors, your enemies, your dogs, your cats, your fish, uh, you know, anybody. And um, and uh, we'll take it from there. Now, uh, and of course, Linux Journal, linuxjournal.com. You can also become a patron of Linux Journal. Of Linux Journal and uh, get a subscription that way. Or you can just go scroll all the way down here where it says subscribe and subscribe to Linux Journal. There we go. Okay, so today, today we're going to do a few interesting things. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about uh, doing backups in Linux land. And uh, the kind of backups that we're going to do are, oops, sorry, let me uh, let me minimize that. The kind of backups that we're going to do are um, just, we're, we're going to go through some simple command line backups, and then I'm going to do some graphical tools to do backups as well, okay? Um, one simple way that you can do a backup, of course, is, uh, you know, if, if you want to get like really, really incredibly simple is we could go something like, you know, fire up your file manager. And uh, I realize this is not the best thing in the world. We'll go split. And uh, on this side here, I'm going to go to a drive that I've got over. This is a, a network drive over on Google Drive. And let's say that I go into build here, which uh, at the moment just has one file. I mean, you could do something as uh, actually let's expand that file before we do anything else, shall we? Let's expand that file. So I've got rsync here, which is actually a tool for doing backups. Okay, it's actually a tool for doing backups. Uh, Lance, Lance, nice to have you. You use Unison for backups. That's awesome. Um, it's awesome because I don't know what Unison is. <laughs> and and it's always awesome when I run into something that I haven't tried before. You know, um, all right, but before we do that, let's do a tar dash XZVF. In a way, when you come right down to it, and I'm going to go rsync, and there we go. So rsync is expanded. There's a folder here called rsync 3.13. It's got a whole pile of files in there. And let's say that all these wonderful files in here are actually the files that we that we want to back up onto a different system. Okay, so we're going to go with that one. Well, the very, very simplest thing you can possibly do 
I mean, the very simplest thing you could possibly do is this. I could say, look, I've got all these files here in this folder. Whoops. Uh, Built. I've got all these files here in this folder. I'm going to expand this folder and I could just say control A and then I could literally just drag these things over here. And instead of um, instead of moving it, moving it wouldn't be doing a backup. It would be erasing it from this side here to put it over here. I'm just going to say copy here. So all of a sudden the files will get copied across the network and one by one. There they go. There we go. We're copying the files um, onto, in this case, a network drive. By the way, this network drive, which I called Lucky, as in you're lucky to have a backup. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you're lucky if you do have a backup and something goes wrong. Um, anyway, um, is actually over on Google Drive. So this is actually a drive, a, a, um, a folder that I created on Google Drive. And if you are using KDE, I'm using KDE at this moment. Similar things, obviously, are, I mean, you can do similar things in um, in GNOME, but I'm using KDE here. Uh, one of the things is network locations, and network locations can be a Samba drive, shared drive on the network, a Bluetooth connected device. One of these days I have to do something on KDE Connect, uh, which, you know, I'm not doing at the moment, but one of these times I have to do something on KDE. Actually, here, let me go, KDE Connect, KDE Connect. There we go. And uh, there's my Samsung tablet on KDE Connect. I can say browse this device. And uh, not only could I have, um, there we go. See, see, these are the, this is like the internal storage on my, um, on my uh, Samsung tablet. And if you're curious about my Samsung tablet, here, let me just, uh, let me just, uh, I'll bring this back up for a second here, just so you can see this thing transition. See, this is a, uh, this is a Samsung Galaxy Tab uh, S2. Uh, this one's a 32 gig. It's it's nice and thin. It, I think it takes its uh, I think it takes its inspiration from um, from Apple. But I digress. Um, let's uh, let's go back. Let's drop that out of the way. So so I mean, it could be any kind of a network connected device, and, it, and it's just as simple as saying you know copy here as opposed to move here, because of course if you move, you've gotten rid of it. And um, Google Drive in this case is. Um, See, there we go. I've got my connected Google Drive, and this is uh, under G Drive here. But I've got a folder in here called Lucky, which is where I'm copying all this stuff. And let's do an F5, and it's still busy copying things. That's fine. And in fact, you can see the progress of the copy down here. Um, but uh, we will just, uh, while that's happening, we're going to do something else. Now, you could just do a tar file, of course, which this all started as a tar file. So I could do something like this, tar-c for create, z for compress, v because I want to see what's happening, f the file name that I want to make it. We're going to call this one fish.tgz, fish.tgz, and <clears throat> and I want to I folder, I want to copy the rsync313 folder. And now I've got in here, I've got a file called fish.tgz and I could conceivably just copy that file somewhere else. And I, Brian, Brian, what do you mean all this digressing is distressing? Dude, you're hurting me. You're hurting me. Welcome, Brian. Got, glad to have you aboard. By the way, here's a sip of wine to you, Brian, and to Lance and to Damon and I. Ah, okay. So now we've got to back up all this digress. I'm, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. I truly am. Um, but I continue digressing anyway. Um, another way to do this is this. Okay, let's say that I have a secondary folder. Let's say that I have a folder. We're going to keep it in build here just for fun. I'm going to make a folder called backups. Okay. Now, backups could be anywhere else. And in fact, I'm going to make it somewhere else in a minute. Okay. Here we could do something like this cp rv and um, whoops, dash rv. And I'm going to say uh, rsync. One three, and I'm going to copy it over into backups this way. Oh, there we go. And if I take a look in backups, now I've got a copy of the rsync folder and everything that was inside it. So I'm going to go rm rf because I'm going to, I want to get rid of that here at the moment. And I'm going to say backups. And um, now there is a problem with copying stuff like this. Obviously, at the moment, I'm just doing this all on the local drive, okay? And I'll show you an external drive in a moment. But uh, I'm going to say, get rid of that. I'm going to say rm-rf, and there we go. Now, if we go to backups, there's nothing inside the backup folder. Another way to do this is this. I can go rsync. Now, there's a program called rsync, and let me show you this. Believe it or not, it's actually from the um, from the Samba people. So if you, you can actually find it. rsync-samba.org is where you actually find the rsync page. This is a great tool, and it's a great tool because... It, it's exactly what it sounds like, remote sync, remote synchronization. Okay, so you can synchronize one folder with another. And this is how it works. 
First of all, I'm going to open up a um, new tab and then I'm going to go SSH dash uh, SSH root root at Minecraft dot .ca where I keep my son's Minecraft folder. There we go. There's a and I'm going to go MKDIR and I'm going to go Fine Dining because that's the name of my that's the name of my machine there. Fine Dining. There we go. Fine Dining. Okay. Now, so let's go back to rsync for a second here, okay? So I'm going to go rsync. The simplest way to do rsync is rsync um, source destination, okay? So source destination. Can can everybody see that? Okay, you can see that. Okay, you can see that large. It's large enough for you. I can make bigger. I can make bigger fonts and bigger pictures if you want. If that'll work things a little bit better for you. But we can see rsync source destination. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go rsync a. Dash A is a great flag because it encompasses a whole pile of other flags. In fact, here, let's go over to, I'm going to go man rsync and I'm going to show you what the uh, dash A option does because the dash A option is great. The dash A option is, is a whole pile of things all combined. Advanced usage, blah, 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 blah. Come on, where are the flags here? Uh, dash A. Dash A equals dash R L P T O G O D. Basically what it all says uh, thank you, everyone, for letting me know that you can see fine. I'm happy to hear that. Uh, what it effectively does is it, it copies directories. It's recursive copy. Uh, it copies sim links as well and permissions. So basically everything that you need to do new to recreate that folder completely. That's what that one does. So now if I go rsync-av because I want to see what's happening, and I'm going to say rsync, I'm going to take that rsync folder 313, and I'm going to go backups, okay? That happened awfully fast, okay? And you can see that um, I've got, you know, all the files that are copied. In fact, let's take a look at backups here. And there's the entire folder, our sync folder that's been copied into backups. Uh, the one that's over here as well. Now, let's say that I take fish.tgz. Okay, I go MV fish. And this is where our sync is really, really great. I go move fish.tgz into or TGZ for my American friends out there. Uh, see, I know, how to, I know how to say it properly. I know how to say it properly. And now what I do is I do the, the same rsync command again, except, except as you know, fish.tgz is now inside that folder, right? So I do this and you'll notice that you didn't get that whole scrolling on the screen happening. And what's, what happened is rsync will only copy the files that have changed. Okay, so now you got fish.tgz. So let me go into our, so touch, let's just add a couple of files for fun. Touch, uh, let me see, touch, daemon i, uh, whoops, hang on, let's go touch. Uh, no, let me see, I gotta go rsync here. Rs whoa, whoa, dude, dude, rsync. Daemon i, and uh, we're gonna go, uh, okay, that one, and then we're gonna go touch rsync, uh, lance, uh, Simmons, uh, am I allowed to copy your names here? I'll just go Lance. I'll do first names because I don't want to upset anybody here. Uh, let me see. Uh, Lance, uh, Brian, Brian, and uh, okay. So and uh, here we'll put we'll put Mar we'll put Francois in there as well because you know Francois is, is the ever forgotten individual here, and uh, we'll put a cat and a dog there as well. Cat and a dog. There we go. Cats and dogs living together. It's just chaos. Chaos. Okay, you got to know what that's a reference from, right? Dogs and cats living together, chaos. You do know this, right? Please tell me you know this. Okay, rsync. See, every time new files get added, every time... <laughs> Z is better than Z. Well, thank you very much. Um, every time a new file gets added and I run rsync, only those things get sent. It's an incremental file list. And the beauty about that is if I have a huge system with a whole whack of files and I'm copying it onto a remote folder somewhere, I'm not going to have this issue now. Now, okay, let's do rsync now. I'm going to show you something else. rsync-ab-e-ssh Remember that drive or remember that server that I told you about, minecraft.salmar.ca, where I've got my kids' uh, Salmar server running? Okay, root at uh, minecraft.salmar.ca, uh, oops, .ca slash uh, root slash fine dining. Okay, there's my remote folder on that server, and I'm going to, so I'm going to do an SSH there. There we go. Oops. Oh, no. <laughs> 
Silly man. Silly. I'm so silly. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. R sync. R sync. There we go. Much better. Okay. Now all this stuff is being transferred over a secure connection. All right. Across the electric internet, as Bill Nye, the science guy, likes to say, the electric internet, and um, over to my server. So now if I go LS Fine Dining, there's my rsync folder with all the files in it. And in fact, uh, let's do uh, let's do a um, let's do a uh, dash L here. There we go. Um, all the stuff is copied over uh, across that one, including, of course, uh, uh, Damon and I and uh, and uh, Brian. Let's see, everybody got copied. The cat, the dog, everybody's over there. All right, so we got everybody. We got everybody. Now, now, now. Now, I'm not going to digress, okay? Just for you, Brian, I'm not going to digress. Anyway, so now, this is all really, really cool. So if I were to if I were to go touch and uh, just add another file here, let's just add another file here, uh, touch cat um, elephant. And now I'm going to do this. You can see where being able to do a, um, a, a backup that doesn't include every single file gets good if you're doing this across networks, okay? So now, the only thing that got transferred is our elephant. But let's say... Let's say now that I don't... So now basically I've got one folder on one side copied and then the, sorry, the original folder on one side and then I've got the one that's copied on the other side and I'm making sure that these things are always in sync. And you can see where you would do this in a cron job where this all happens magically in the background. Um, so if I want all this to happen in the background, um, sorry, I've just jumped ahead of myself. If I want this to happen in the background, obviously I'm going to do this inside a cron job and I'm not going to create a, a script to do this today. But one of the downsides, of course, is that if I remove a file, if I go rm, rsync, and I get rid of the dog, okay? Let's say that I get rid of the... I don't have anything against dogs. I want to make that clear, okay? I'm going to have a sip of wine here. Excuse me. So if I do an rsync now to my remote folder, okay, there's nothing new. Sending incremental files, there's nothing new in the file. But take a look over here. If I take a look here and I do this ls again, um, whoops, and I just go up to the top here, you'll see that the dog is still there, despite the fact that I have erased the dog on the local drive. Now, this could be a good or a bad thing. OK, it could be a good thing if it turns out that this. Uh, in fact, if you were really, really smart on this remote server here, this remote uh, server, hide and seek a multi world. You can can you tell just looking at this for a second that this is all Minecraft stuff, <laughs> Minecraft worlds. Um, anyway, I, I, I'm OK. I'm not going to digress, Brian. I swear to I swear. I'm, I swear to you, I'm not going to digress anyway. Um, so if I do this, if I go, uh, in fact, let's go CD fine dining there. There we go. And if I wanted to be totally safe here, I could do, you know, C, Z, B, F, uh, uh, mine, mine tar dot T, G, Z. And then I just go R sync. And then I've got a local backup over here and it's all great. It's all fine and dandy, even if files go missing. But this is, this is not where I wanted to go with this at the moment. I know it sounds like digressing, but it's not. Okay, so I go back over here, and the problem is that there's no dog here, but I want these two to be exactly the same, all right? All right, so now what I can do is I can do dash AV, and then I'm going to go dash dash delete. Dash dash delete is a really cool flag. Dash dash delete says if there's something on this side that doesn't exist anymore, delete it from the other side as well. So check it out. Check it out. Look at that. Deleting rsync 3.13 slash dog. So now, now if I do an ls dash l rsync, there should be no dog. There should be no dog. And let's scroll up. There we go. Doc, doxy file. The dog is gone. And again, I, I have nothing against dogs. I'm just using the dog as an example. And no dogs were harmed in the creation of this Cooking with Linux show. I just want to make that clear. Just, I don't want you guys to call PETA on me. Uh, is it P-E-T-A? P-I-T-A? PETA. No, PETA is, is like the bread pocket that you put food into. PETA, P-E-T-A, are those those animal activist people things. Anyway, I digress. Oh, wait. Shh, shh. No digressing. Okay, so dash dash delete is awesome that way. Okay, dash dash delete is awesome. Now, 
this is all great. This is all dandy. It's all command line stuff. So let's say that you're not really 100% comfortable doing command line stuff. There are a bunch of graphical tools. And in fact, and in fact, uh, I was uh, pointed out, um, what, what was what was that one up at the top? You see, now I have to go back and take a look. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. Lance uses Unison for backups. Unison for backups. Uh, let's just do, just, I probably shouldn't do this, but apt search Unison. Let's, I, I'm curious now. Unison, uh, file synchronization tool for Unix and Windows. I'm almost tempted to just load it up and check it out now. So let's check it out here. So sudo, sudo apt install Unison. I wonder how fast we can actually make this work. But um, psh, there it is. It's installing. It's installing. It's wonderful. I don't know if it has a graphical tool. But, but before we look at Unison, a system restart is needed. No, it's not. You lie. You lie. Um, I installed another tool called Lucky Backup. Lucky Backup, as in you're lucky to have a backup. And uh, we're going to say add. We're going to say add name. Um, I'm going to say uh, my rsync folder. My rsync folder because that's what we've been doing. And and uh, for a source, for a source for this thing, um, let me see. For a source for this thing, we're going to go and click here. And I'm going to say that I want the build folder and I want the rsync folder. Um and we're going to use that one okay so that's the source the destination in this case is going to be um uh, slash home slash m gagne slash what did i do here what have i done what have i done um okay hold on a second um i know that i don't have a fish created here so i'm going to go mkdir tilde whoops tilde slash fish and now i have a fish created I have a fish. I've created a fish. I've created life. I've created life. No, sorry. I apologize. Okay. And I'm going to say, okay. All right. All right. So now I say, okay. And I have my rsync folder. And uh, now, uh, now I can uh, say, um, let me see. Uh, fresh schedule. I don't want to schedule. I don't want to run. I want to run it right this instant. Can I just run it right now? Um, task task can i do it right this instant can i do it right this instant email report i don't want to do that schedule schedule uh add um default can i do right this instant right now right now hmm i know i can schedule it but i was kind of hoping i could do it right this instant uh save Save default pro profile successfully, and I'm going to say default. Uh, there's my default profile. Can I just run it? Um, oh, there we are. Oh, good grief. It says run. Lance! Lance, thank you. I should have looked over at you earlier. Man, I can't believe I... This is terrible. I feel terrible. Okay, run. <laughs> You've not included any task. <laughs> run. There we go. <laughs> Oh man, I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> Done. Anyway, there we go. So as the so as it copies the stuff over, it gives you it, it it shows you what it's copying. There's a bar down here that shows you uh, how much has been copied over. And in fact, let's say done here. And I'm gonna remove so rm rsync. And this time I'm going to remove the cat, okay? For the people out there who, who think I'm being cruel to dogs. So let's run it again. And now um, it went obviously a lot quicker, but you'll notice that it deletes the cat by default. That's because Lucky Backup is treating this as a backup. In other words, I want to create a copy of the information um, and if that if something changes on one side then it changes on the other even if it's a file that is there so let's just do ls tilde fish just so that you can see here and if i go um uh, see uh, home gangi home gangi oh i put a space oh good grief i put a space well that was silly there we go <laughs> so even though i hadn't created the folder in this case i'd put a space in there and it made the space for me there it is and if i do that and i go rsync and i go c uh you'll notice there's no cat 
Okay, so there's no cat. The cat's been uh, has been written out of the picture in this case. All right, so just for fun, so basic backup then tar is the simplest possible form of backup actually the simplest is drag and drop from one folder to another making sure you copy instead of move otherwise you're going to erase your files so be careful when you do that the second easiest thing if you want to go down to the command line is to do tar and then of course you've got rsync which i showed you here including rsync to a remote folder which is actually pretty neat. And if you want a um, relatively easy to use backup that you can, by the way, set up a schedule on. Okay, so you can actually, uh, sorry, you can actually set up a schedule for this thing and, and decide when it is that you want this thing to run, which days of the week you want it to run, uh, you know, once a month, once a week, whatever, um, you know, even if you want the thing to reboot after it's finished doing the backup. Um, you can set that up in here and it's all done through a graphical interface. It's really, really simple. Present Arms! Good to have you here. Let me have a sip to you. I'm drinking a sip of wine to you as well, Present Arms. Thanks for coming. And, um, and by the way, I have used Lucky Backup in the past. In fact, it's what I set up on my wife's computer because uh, she didn't want to have to... I mean, I was doing everything command line and I had everything on a command line, but she wanted something that she could just run through a graphical program. And that's when I started using uh, Lucky Backup. Loved it. Um, been using it for years and it's based on rsync which I've always been happy with I mean I've always liked using rsync um, just just before I move on to the next part here unison unison run unison is this a graphical tool uh, unison is not looking like a graphical tool unison no unison um, uh, let me see unison dash dash sorry um, that's just man unison. Man unison. Uh, path to synchronize, permissions, root. Sounds an awful lot like rsync, doesn't it? It's got a lot of rsyncyness to it, obviously with different command things. But um, I will have. I will look at unison. Unison GTK. Ah, okay. Unison. Oh, Unison GTK is not installed. So why not? I've gone this far. I've gone this far. Let's do it. Unison apt, uh, sudo apt install Unison dash GTK. There it is. Unison GTK. Uh, while I'm out of here, let's just close this one here. And, um, and uh, let's take a look. Unison. There we go. Oh, there we go. It's got a nice you. Oh, hey, looks looks very similar, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, forward, forward profile name. Let's call it Francois. We'll call this profile Francois. Forward uh, synchronization local. Oh, there we go. Using SSH. Um, host. Um, and uh, user. We're going to do root. And I'm going to say forward. And uh, local directory in this case, we're going to say m gagne. Um, oops, uh, I'm going to say other because I don't want I don't want to copy the whole thing. We're going to say build. I'm going to say just I'm going to say the build folder. I'm going to say open, and uh, the remote directory is uh, slash root. Whoops, slash root slash fine dining forward. Uh, synchronization involving a fat partition. No, it is not. You have now finished filling in the profile. Click apply to create it. Uh, there's Francois. And I can say um, open uh, lost connection with the server. <laughs> Lance, I promise I'll figure it out for next week. I promise I'll figure it out for next week. Now we're going to go to our old friend. Uh, so that's it. That's what I'm going to do with... Uh, I, that's what I'm going to do with... Um, with uh, this uh, for now and I want to move to the Linux distribution of the day the Linux distribution of the day and this was Trinity from last week I'm just going to delete Trinity so that um, I'm going to say delete yes and we're going to create a brand new distribution and the one that I want to show you today is something called G Nuisance. okay if you're the sort of person if you're the sort of person who doesn't like having uh, proprietary um, blobs uh, proprietary software drivers things like that you actually don't like it if it's if it's not completely free according to the free software foundation um, and uh, the ideals thereof in other words everything in it must be free as in speech not just free as in beer 
uh, then this is probably the distribution for you, and it's based on Debian, okay? Um, and uh, we're going to install it. Uh, I'm going to run it for the first time. Uh, I've, To be perfectly honest, I've never had a lot of interest in running it because I, I know it's terrible. I'm sorry. I apologize. But I don't have a lot of trouble with running my distribution with the occasional piece of of a proprietary blobbiness because there are things I want to have working regardless of how I make it work. So I, I know. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But anyway, here we go. So local image install ISO and we're going to say the ISO image in this case we're going to say browse in my ISO folder and I have downloaded the latest uh, G new sense and so I'm going to say okay and I'm going to say forward and we're going to give this thing uh, 4096 of RAM uh, and I'm going to say just one CPU that's fine for now 20 gigabyte drive perfect and we're going to call it G new sense nuisance nuisance is that a I, i'm not sure what i think of that word i'm not sure what i think of that new sense gnu sense g gnu sense g new sense i'm not sure i like it anyway <laughs> mine is not to uh, to question why and all that stuff all right so let's just uh shall we boot up the live let's boot up the live and take a look at it control alt i'm going to bring this up here and then we are going to go full screen I do love text screens. Who doesn't love text screens? Come on, who doesn't love? Everybody loves text boot up screens, right? Cheers, cheers everyone. All right, unfortunately you don't fail to start properly. Okay, well that's fine, I'm okay with that. All right, there we go, G Nuisance. Let's take a look at this thing in terms of, um, uh, in terms of I don't have my mouse working here. Hmm, hmm. Hmm. Let's uh, s let's make this uh, small again here, and then um, I'll just bring that up here. I do not have a mouse. I do not have a mouse in here. I do not have a mouse. Uh, hmm. Is it just because I am impatient and I have not let it boot up properly? Let me give it a second longer here and see what happens. But uh, at the moment, it doesn't look like I've got a mouse. Um, hmm. Let's just try one more time. Apparently, the live part of this is not actually working very well for me. Let me go Control-Alt. And uh, I wanted to show you something else. Uh, let's... Let's actually stop this completely and because uh, I can't even load it from here. So force off. Let's force it off. Yes, that's fine. I'm good with that. We're going to go to um, boot. Uh, let me see. Boot options. And we're going to boot off of the drive. And I'm going to say apply. And then we're going to start it up again. Okay. We're going to start it up again and take a look at it. Oh, new boot, no boot device has failed. Or sorry, no found rather, I should say. Uh, boot device, IDE CD-ROM. That's correct. All right, enable boot menu, fine. And uh, apply again. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to say force off. Yes. And we're going to try this one more time, shall we? We're going to try this one more time. Guest is not running. Press escape for boot menu. Press escape for boot menu. Uh, I want to boot off the DVD drive. No bootable drive. All right. Well, obviously, that is going to be a bit of a problem. We're going to try one more thing. Don't you love doing stuff live and watching it break? I know I do. <laughs> we're going to try this a different way. I'm going to go delete, and I'm going to say delete. Yes. And then we're going to try it one more time here. Okay, forward. Um, and there's my G Nuisance ISO forward. And instead of doing what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to install it. Okay, so we're going to try to install it. And while it's busy installing, and we're going to call it G Nuisance as well. S E N S C. Whoops. Caps lock. E N S E. By the way, it's not because of cap locks that it didn't work. I just want to make that clear. All right, and I'm going to say over here, I'm going to say install. So we're going to say install and uh, oh, oh, a text install. I suppose I could have done the graphical install, but that's fine. Let's fine. Let's do the text install here. Uh, we're going to say English 
United States, American English. I'm totally cool with that. Uh, additional components. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. And while that's happening, I'm going to create another machine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna double task, multitask. I realize multitasking is impossible, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And I'm gonna show you Pony OS. Pony OS, yes. It's apparently a completely open source operating system, and we'll take a look at it in a moment. All right, this is actually still going, so I'm gonna create it as we go. I'm gonna say forward. I don't know that we need 20 gig of disk, but hey, why not? And we're gonna call this one Pony OS, Pony OS, and I'm gonna say finish. Creating domain, all right. And uh, normal live seed, let's go live seed, uh, Pony OS. <laughs> A completely open source distribution that is apparently not based on Linux. There we go. G nuisance, unassigned domain. That's fine. I'm good with that. Um, root password, root password, S E C R E T. No, I don't do this in real life. S E C R E T. I just, full name for the new user, Francois. Francois, username for the account, password for Francois, S E C R E T. S E C R E T. Kids, don't try that at home. Not well. You can try this, but don't don't use your, don't use that for a password. Do not type secret for a password. All right, partman, partman, guided. Use entire disk. Just just use the whole disk. It's it's just a drive. All files in one partition. Sure, that's fine. Finish partitioning. Write changes to disk. I'm good with that. Yes, write it, and uh, we're gonna let the installation go through. And we're gonna go and take a look at this other alternate. <laughs> Alternate open source operating system. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my dollar deity. Welcome to Pony OS, the tutorial. Um, um, oh my goodness. Apparently you can, if, if you're willing to create a virtual, uh, sorry, an open source operating system, you can, you can make all sorts of really interesting things. Next. Um, Next, as a reminder, Pony S is a hobby project with new developers. As such, do not expect things to work perfectly. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, next, uh, let's see. Uh, very much a work in progress. Pony, a, a, a Unix-like environment. Does that sound familiar, anybody? Does that sound familiar? Unix-like environment. Familiar with command line tools by opening a terminal shortcuts. Um, you can explore the file system using the file browser. Many third part blah, oh, wonderful. Okay, let's just go terminal. Let's uh, let's open up. Uh, let's open. Let's close this and let's uh, let's act, let's go straight in for the action. Fluttershy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, ls slash bin. Okay, ls slash bin. Let's take a look. Uh, Pixman. Pixman! Hmm. Pixman demo, painting PY. Obviously some Python stuff. There's some there's some real Python stuff in here. Uh, what are some of the things over here? Uh, fractals. Oh, there we go. Julia Fractals. Um, I'll move that over here. Oh, apparently when you move something over, you create a secondary window of it. Uh, what do we got? Painting. Painting. Uh, let's open up a paint program. There we go. We got a paint program open. We can get back to uh, f tools, uh, color, and uh, let's go over here. And we, there we go. Hello. 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 Anyway, uh, enough of that. And um, so, yeah, so we've got a, a Unix-like operating system, uh, ls slash home, and uh, home bash, home local, home root. Fascinating, fascinating. Come on, people, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think of this uh, Unix-like operating packages? Let's take a look at packages. What do we have got? Enter password for local. Uh, was there a password? Oh, there we go. Fetching manifest. And, and a box PC emulator, Pony OS. Don't you love those fonts? Emoji one. Doom! Doom! You can install Doom on this thing. You can install Doom. I mean, can you... Can, Doom on Pony OS? Seriously, come on. Doom, what else is there? A JPEG library. Uh, so this you got to admire, in a way, grudgingly. You have to admire the person who created this thing. Oh, let's install Doom. 
and say, yeah, okay. Um, and uh, while that's happening, I'm going to go back to G <laughs> go back to G nuisance and take a look at it. Use a network mirror. Uh, I'm going to say no. Let's just let's just let this thing finish installing, and then we'll have a look at it. Ah, cheers, everyone. Retrieving file 17 of 17. And maybe we can get GNuisance to actually boot onto a graphical desktop. That would be so cool. I would be so excited. I would. Uh, post installation, Grub PC. This is looking good. Install the group loader. Yes, please do so. Grub bootloader, dev slash SDA. I'm excited. I'm excited. Is everyone excited? I'm excited. Setting users and permissions. Hardware clock. We're almost there. We're almost there. Yeah, how's, how's Pony doing? Oh, it's still fetching doom. <laughs> <laughs> installation is complete all right let's do this running remove life packages and um <laughs> ah bronies bronies i've heard of bronies brian how is it that you know about bronies <laughs> i'm on the internet too i i know lots of things that happen on the internet ah sorry okay we're booting up we're booting up G Nuisance. Do you remember what the password was? I think it was secret. I think the password was secret. Ah, all right. Let's go full screen. Francois. Okay. Francois password S E C R E T. And. Pass or not passwords, but um, but uh, GNOME three failed to load again. Is incapable of delivering the full GNOME three experience. Well, I should be able to. I should be able to work my. Oh, the, the mouse is working this time. The mouse is working this time. Um, I can switch virtual desktops. Am I just impatient? Oh, there we go. Applications, accessories. There we go. Accessories. Uh, let's let's open up a root terminal. Uh, S E C R E T. We have a root terminal available, and um, apt update. Oops. Apt get update. Oh, haven't had to type apt get in full for a long time. Games. We've got some basic games installed. Graphics tools. Uh, the GIMP Inkscape. Um, Internet. Uh, Ice Weasel web browser. There we go. Office, uh, the the standard Office applications. Bracero Rhythmbox, not bad, not bad. I mean, it's it's a perfectly it's a perfectly good uh, GNOME three based uh, Linux distribution. I honestly don't see a whole heck of a lot wrong with it, to be perfectly honest. And uh, I would wager that if you can get it to, I mean, if this will work properly on your desktop without the um, without need for any, uh, like I said, without need for any proprietary blobs, uh, specifically when it comes to things like network drivers or, uh, you know, a high-speed graphics card or something like that. Like on this PC that I'm running this on at the moment, I've got a, um, this is a, uh, what is it? What is it? Oh, there it is. It's an NVIDIA GeForce 940 MX with 2 gig of, uh, of graphical memory. So I have hardware graphical memory. So that's actually what's running on mine. Um, there we go. That's what GNuSense looks like. It's basically, like I said, it's a it's a GNOME desktop. And if I go down here and uh, let's... Uh, apparently, I can't click on the background. Right-click on the background. Hmm. Hmm. Right-click on the background. That's not actually working for me. Uh, maybe it's because... Um, yeah, yeah, I understand that. It's because I... Let's go preferences, um, preferences, preferences, Rigel preferences. I love that Rigel. Um, sorry, here as I try to. Advanced settings, uh, desktop, have, have file manager handle the desktop, files, fonts, shell extensions, theme. Uh, let's change the theme just for fun. Aging Gorilla. There we go. Aging Gorilla. Like it. Like it. Um, Crux. Mm, Metabox. Metabox is kind of neat. There we go. G Nuisance. Anyway, we have it. We have installed it. It is working just fine. And again, it's a Debian distribution for people who do not want to uh, have any proprietary software whatsoever 
uh, running on their Linux distributions. And it is Debian based, so I mean, it's, uh, it's not going to be totally unfamiliar. And according to Present Arms, it should work fine on all Intel stuff. Um, so definitely worth checking it out if you want to keep your distribution looking uh, nice and pure. And uh, we're just going to close Pony. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to close Pony OS here, and I'm going to fire up the uh, the um, OBS Studio window one more time here. <laughs> and I want to thank everybody for joining me today. This is where I'm going to wrap it up. I want to thank everybody for joining me. Um, I do take requests, so if you um, if you if there's something that you'd like me to cover that you'd like me to talk about, maybe I'll spend some time trying to figure out how to use Unison between here and next week. Um, please let me know ahead of time so that uh, it's something we can check out. And distribution, same thing. If there's a distribution that you think isn't getting, uh, you know, isn't getting the view that it should be, or that uh, people, you know, just haven't heard about it, and you'd like them to hear about it, please let me know, and I'll make that available as well. This whole presentation is going to be available through the Linux Journal website, LinuxJournal.com, later today. Cheers, Linux Journal. Thank you. And of course, it'll be available on my YouTube channel, which is which is over here, uh, Marcel Gagné, uh, youtube.com slash, you don't need the slash user here, but slash freethinker at large is my channel. Please, 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 please uh, share, tell other people about this um, and uh, spread the word, spread the word that Cooking with Linux is available and alive on YouTube every Tuesday. We're going to try noon again next week, unless everybody tells me that one o'clock was somehow better than noon, but otherwise we'll try it again on noon next week. Oops, uh, let me go back this way. Uh, uh, new next week and um, we'll see you back here and again um, thank you so much for being here thanks for joining me and uh, we'll see you later take care out there à votre santé bon appétit now how do I there's a stop button over here there we go stop streaming